Welcome to chapter 11, section 2. We're still talking about measuring simple harmonic motion, and now we're going to look at some math examples. So today, for our math examples, we're going to look at how to calculate the period and the frequency of an object vibrating with simple harmonic motion. So we've discussed two specific examples of simple harmonic motion, and now we're going to look at how to calculate the period for each. And if you remember, the frequency is just 1 over the period. So once we know how to calculate the period, it's easy to find the frequency. So first we're going to look at measuring it for a simple pendulum. So when we have a simple pendulum, the period depends on two things. The length of the string, so how long that string is, and the acceleration due to gravity. What will surprise you is that the mass of this bob can be anything and it will not affect the period. Okay, so it does not depend on the mass at all. And the other thing it doesn't depend on is the amplitude. Amplitude also does not affect the period. So amplitude also doesn't matter for this. We do care about amplitude sometimes, but not when it comes to figuring out the period of it. So how do we find that then? Well, we have this handy equation, okay? So the period is equal to 2 pi. This is the length of the bob. Or excuse me, not the length of the bob, the length of the string from here to here. And then this AG, most of the time this is the acceleration of gravity. And they don't use just the letter G because we might have a pendulum on the moon or somewhere else, okay? But most of the time, if we're talking about Earth then this will be g, which is 9.81. So now let's look at an example of how to calculate this. So our question here is you're going to design a pendulum clock to have a period of one second. So how long should you make the length of this pendulum to be? First we need to look at our equation here. So I just plugged that in there, and it looks like it accidentally covered up, but it said that the period needs to be one second. We want to know what L will be, so that's what we're calculating. And we are going to have this uh, 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 clock on Earth, so our AG will be our 9.81. So the first thing we need to do, really, that will make it easier is just solve for L. So I saw, if I solve for L and rewrite this, I end up with it looking like this. If you have questions about how I got this, feel free to ask me in class. But we're just going to assume that you can do that on your own right now. So now I just need to plug in the information and solve. So I'm solving length is what I want to know. So I can just plug in the rest of the numbers here. I've got my acceleration of gravity. I have my period, which is 1 second, divided by 2 pi. Make sure if you're plugging this in on your calculator, you put parentheses around that so that it comes out correctly. And then we will need to square that. When I do all that and plug it into my calculator, I find out that the length of our pendulum should be 0 0.27 meters. Okay. So now that we've looked at finding the length of a pendulum, we're going to look at our other system that we've been discussing. So we are now going to look at it for a mass and spring system. So in a mass and spring system, this time it does depend on the mass of the object, and it depends on our spring constant, k. So as we're doing this, the equation actually looks very similar. So we still have t equals 2 pi, the square root. And this time we have our mass here, and k again is our spring constant. So looking at our example now with this one, we have a mass of 0.3 kilograms is attached to a spring and is set into vibration. Remember that means to go back and forth like this with a period of 0.24 seconds. And it looks like the picture got moved. Sorry about that. But it says what is the spring constant of the spring? So we're finding K. So here's our equation. Okay. And again, the period it tells us will be 0 0.24 seconds, and we know that our mass is 0 0.30 kilograms. And like in the last one, we're going to find it easier to just solve for k to begin with. So I've gone ahead and done that. 
Again, you can ask me if you have any questions, but k will be equal to m divided by, we've got our parentheses here, the period divided by 2 pi squared. So now if we plug in our information, we've got our mass of 0 0.30 kilograms divided by our period is 0 0.24 seconds divided by 2 pi. Again, make sure you're putting all your parentheses in the correct place in your calculator. And when we plug all of that in, we end up with K being equal to 205.6 newtons per meter. So now you should be able to solve for the period of either a mass and spring system or a pendulum. And remember, it would be really simple to go ahead and switch this to frequency by just using this simple equation that we have before. Please let me know if you have any questions in class, and I'll see you there.